Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Arman. Today I'll be talking about RxJS. It's uh, not mainstream, but quite useful operators. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, my name is Arman. I'm based in Netherlands. I live and work in Amsterdam. I have over 15 years of diverse software engineering experience. I've gone through, like started with Pascal, C++, Java, and all the way to modern JavaScript and TypeScript and front-end frameworks, of course. Some, at some time in the past, I was also co-founder and CTO of a startup software service that gathered uh, good traction and investment. And the uh, last five years of my life, I'm dedicated and working mostly FinTech. I'm innovating and uh, automating uh, uh, banking industry, which is uh, quite uh, big, I would say. And uh, at some point, uh, I was a semi-finalist of a ACM programming contest. So uh, what is RxJS? RxJS, uh, some say one of the most difficult, how, but also uh, most rewarding J JavaScript libraries to learn. Basically, it's a tool that helps us control data as it flows through the dimension of time. And uh, RxJS is getting uh, more and more popular still nowadays. In fact, as you can see, it's, uh, it, it gets more daily NPM downloads than React, Angular, and Vue. And the only other uh, uh, functional library that I'm aware of that is bigger is Lodash. And as you can see, soon <laughs> RxJS will overcome and will be number one. And the reason for its popularity is that JavaScript alone doesn't give us um, quite everything we need, would like to work with asynchronous streams of data. But some would say we have promises, but they work with a single async value. So we use callback in for real time streams. But uh, you've probably called, uh, heard about uh, callback hell. So RxJS addresses those issues and give us a powerful a functional library for dealing with streams. And uh, when I say streams, uh, I'm talking about uh, any data source that unfolds over the dimension of time. Uh, things like um, data from endpoints, um, DOM events, web sockets, even file uploads and so on. And the fundamental, uh, the most fundamental class of RxJS is observable. You can think of it is as a wrapper of some data that can be subscribed to and the subscriber will be notified anytime the data changes. And uh, as you can see from the picture, when you're working with RxJS, you should think of yourself as a plumber. I mean that in the most literal sense, because an observable is basically a pipe for data and RxJS gives us all kinds of uh, tools to modify those pipes. And those tools are operators, and there are over 120 operators, uh, quite a lot. Those operators are classified into uh, creations, transformation, filtering, joining, multicasting, error handling, and so on. And uh, yeah, basically there are more than 100 operators I've been using RxJS quite intensively for the last four or five years, and I have only seen, like, uh, I'm aware of 50, max 60 operators, and uh, I use only like 10 of them in daily life, like daily. Uh, so, yeah, but however, there are some operators that are not commonly known. Um, it's not used that frequently however it's quite useful and it's very good to know those so because yeah like when you don't know what you don't know then uh yeah um, remembering those operators and using might really uh make life uh easier so uh 
before we proceed, let's do a warm up. I will give a couple of uh, small exercises uh, with observables so that we kind of warm up, we remember our XJS, we have a little bit fun. The remaining of the presentation would be more advanced user, but for the beginning, for the beginners, uh, it would be interesting, I think. So basically, uh, we have two observables uh, called using different um, operators. One is called created using of, the other one, observable two, is created using from. However, they were used uh, the same string, hello world, uh, was used to create both. And then we basically subscribe to both. So the question is, uh, would those two uh, print the same values? Uh, write down uh, your answer in the chat. Uh, and the answer is no. So the first one would take the entire string and print it out. The other one would assume uh, string is an uh, array of characters and would uh, emit or print the characters one by one. Uh, the second exercise is reduce and scan versus scan. So you probably heard about um, reduce in uh, array functions where most commonly it's used to uh, calculate sum of uh, all the numbers in the array. So we use uh, we do something similar here. We create uh, observable one two three. Then we uh, pipe uh, for the first one. We pipe reduce for the other one scan, and then we use the same function, the same uh, uh, sum function basically. Then we subscribe to both. So the question is again the same question: Would those two uh, print the same values? And the answer is, again, no, because the first one, reduce, is uh, accumulates and just uh, prints the uh, final sum, while uh, scan would run that function for every emitted value. And then it, for the first, it's 1, then 1 plus 2, and 1 plus 2 plus 3. So that's it for the warm-up. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, switch map, basically one of the most uh, popular uh, operator. It's used everywhere. Mostly uh, we use it when we have one observable that uh, emits uh, some data. Then we use result of the data and then we subscribe to another observable. Sometimes we don't even use uh, the data, we just basically one uh, observable uh, subscribing to another observable. And we can have multiple layers of those. But there are, besides switch map, there are much more uh, other operators like um, flat map, merge map, concat map, and so on. And uh, what, uh, yeah, I mean, in most cases, we can use either of them, but it's good to know uh, why it's called switch map, like switch, and uh, uh, where it's used. So uh, here uh, is an example from a real project, so I simplified it. So basically, uh, we have auto-suggest. So as we type a word, uh, as you can see, I piped debounce time, so we don't want to hammer the endpoint. Uh, so we have debounce time of 500 milliseconds, half a second. And then uh, whenever we type in, and then, the, then it makes the request. So we do switch map, then we uh, HTTP get uh, yeah, some uh, we, we do some query with uh, those words. So uh, what happens if uh, the user keeps typing? Uh, is uh, yeah, like the next, uh, for example, user typed uh, 500 milliseconds, then um, it emits the event. It makes a HTTP GET request. Then, for example, is for example we have. Um, We've made the uh, API request, then we are waiting for it, and then the f another 500 milliseconds uh, passed, and then user typed some more characters. What happened? Uh, the text input would uh, it would subscribe again, and it would drop the, the the previous one. So it would not wait for the previous API request; it would make another one. 
So that's why it's called switch. So for example, uh, before the second uh, observable returns value and uh, the first one emits the next value, it would switch to a new one. So it would, yeah, it can make uh, theoretically uh, 10 requests as we are typing. And it, if, uh, if API is a little bit slow, then it would just uh, stick to the last one. And uh, yeah, and debounce time is uh, yeah uh, also a pretty common uh, operator. Now I would uh, show another example of a very common uh, code. I see it daily everywhere, wherever I uh, review pull requests. I've, yeah, in in many projects I've seen this. So basically, we have some. Uh, some service that uh, uh, authenticates user or get the user uh, details. Then uh, we get user ID from it. And then we have other, we make other API requests. For example, we get transactions of the user, we get accounts of the user, and we get some more data of the user. And uh, we use uh, user ID uh, to get those transactions. And for instance, uh, you can see uh, we pipe uh, switch map. So we have user ID, then we switch map, we use that user ID, then in a get transactions uh, function, which returns, uh, which makes a request for transactions. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, this code works, it does its job. However, there is one issue here. Did you guess? Get uh, guess what the issue is? And yes, the issue that uh, assuming uh, get auth user is uh, API request, for example, and then uh, transactions accounts and some more data is also API request. So when we implement the first logic, uh, basically the user uh, get user API is called three times because uh, yeah because we pipe it three times so a uh, user is, is I mean we retrieve user information three times so that is additional load for the browser and it's it's uh, it's more waiting time and yeah it's not fun it's not correct so what we can do is we can use uh, we can make uh, the user observable uh, called. So for instance, uh, currently it's hot, which means um, uh, it would, um, when, when it's hot, basically it is, uh, well, I would say, uh, I, would, I would use different uh, uh, terms for, for uh, cold, I would use uh, multi and for hot, I would use uh, single. So uh, the first one is uh, single, which means uh, it is for single use and uh, cold means uh, multi-use, which is, uh, yeah, which, which we are doing here basically. So we're transforming our uh, users into cold. We share replay, so uh, we could use share and share replay. Those two operators uh, basically uh, makes uh, the users uh, observable shareable. And uh, share replay means uh, one means that we store uh, the last one value. So since um, this is just a single API request and it executes only once, uh, we put one or we could use share. And then when we pipe uh, users to transaction, to accounts, to anything else, uh, the data uh, would be shared. So the user's API would be called just once. Or uh, we could also use another operator called connect. So you can uh, see the syntaxes. So uh, yeah, basically we uh, connect um, and then also uh, now we can see share uh, is basically this, it's, it's the same as previous. And also here we have merged uh, transactions accounts and oh yeah, some more data maybe some other accounts. And then uh, this would emit, uh, this would be like just one of the rule that emits everything. Or 
we could, I would say, basically better use combined latest instead of merge. So yeah, in the previous one we used merge combined latest, and the difference is uh, the merge would emit whatever. For example, we made a user request, then we made a all three requests, for, and for instance, transaction requests, uh, API is quicker, it returns the value earlier, then it would emit it right away. Then when the accounts is emitted, we'll get accounts. Um, while combined latest would wait for the API response from the all three uh, API requests, and then return all the results in an array. So combined latest fits better, I think, than merge here. And uh, while talking about RxJS, it's uh, important to mention uh, memory leaks. You've probably seen a lot of uh, memes <laughs> and jokes about uh, memory leaks. Uh, and especially with RxJS and especially uh, with very large applications, uh, as application grows, uh, uh, it is quite common. I mean, memory leaks are a ticking bomb because when you have one or two, it's not, it, it's okay. You don't even notice when application uh, grows and gets bigger, then your entire application slows down. The loading time is slow, then it eats up RAM and so on. So uh, yeah, for the memory leaks, I would say we use all the takes. There are basically four take operators. Uh, yeah, in early days, like, I think in RxJS 5, there were uh, some issues with take. However, in the latest version, they work very well. So uh, we're basically, I would, uh, memory leaks on RxJS are mostly happens when you subscribe to something, then you leave uh, the component or component uh, gets destroyed, but um, the subscription is there. So you don't unsubscribe from it and it's still there in the memory. So basically that's a uh, uh, memory leak. So uh, one of the thing is, we, of course, we could subscribe and ups, unsubscribe, but there are also operators for that. Uh, first one is take. This is the syntaxis. Uh, it take uh, takes a value. For example, we give value two. So it means it would take uh, two values, then it would automatically unsubscribe. So from the example here, we create uh, yeah observer of five values. So we take first two, it prints to the screen one, two, and then it automatically unsubscribes. Uh, the next one is take last. It's the same as take, but uh, in reverse order. So it would take last two, in the example here, uh, we emitted one to five, so it would just take four and five. The next one is take while. So it is um, take uh, while and then some condition. Yeah, so for example, we take a value while the value is less than two. Then, uh, yeah, this would be, uh, this would emit only one because only one is less than two and then uh, it would stop. Uh, it's good to mention here, for example, if our array was one, two, three, four, and then one again, the last one would not be emitted because it has stopped in the second uh, operator. So yeah, after when, when, uh, when two is emitted, the observer would be unsubscribed and that's it, it would not go further. And uh, last one is take until, so basically this would be, uh, imagine we have uh, yeah, some source uh, observable, then we have some uh, other observable. So the, the source observable would keep emitting values until the second observable uh, emits something. So here we can see uh, uh, interval observable and then uh, the stopper. Um, yeah, so basically after 2001 milliseconds, it would emit value and then it would uh, automatically unsubscribe. So here you can see it would emit zero, one, and then the two seconds passed and then it would unsubscribe. Later, uh, yeah, later I will uh, show more uh, meaningful example with uh, take until. So, yeah. so wait. 
So here, uh, let's talk about the uh, promised uh, non-mainstream, but uh, very useful operators. I find exhaust map quite, uh, quite great operator, but it's not that commonly used. So it is like switch map, but the opposite. So basically switch map, in switch map, we have the first observer emitting, and then the second observer being dropped when the first emits another value. So uh, in, um, in the exhaust map, it would be the other way around. So for example, uh, here is an example. Uh, we have uh, safe to click. So uh, we have a safe click event. So basically a click of a button event. And then exhaust map is basically we do some HTTP post request and we save the data. And uh, when uh, safe is clicked, it would start making a API request and basically uh, it would stop the first observer. So for example, if we click and then we keep clicking the button, it would, it would not do anything un until the uh, second observable is completed or emits a value. So uh, yeah, of course we can uh, uh, achieve this by disabling button when it's first click, but this is another alternative way of doing that. So uh, yeah, if we have used a switch map here, then every time we uh, click the button, it would make another request, another request, and then it would just wait for the last one. But uh, here is, uh, yeah, exhaust map. And another example of uh, exhaust map is drag and drop. So um, when we uh, click on the mouse or we, it would start listening for the next one. So once we click, it would uh, start listening to the uh, mouse movements. So for instance, we click, then we start uh, moving the mouse. It would, it would, it would uh, keep triggering event. And then here we have un take until. So we listen to uh, mouse movements until we uh, release the mouse. So this is uh, implementation basically of drag and drop. And yeah, this is very simplified example, but this is generally how it's implemented with uh, Rx. Yeah, and uh, yeah, another operator, uh, Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, another operators uh, that are quite uh, useful, uh, but um, yeah, not that uh, commonly used. For instance, uh, I haven't even heard about defer. I was using something else like workarounds and then yeah, while well, I could have just used operator. So uh, yeah, let me run through this example. For example, we want to uh, uh, implement the animation when we uh, pull down uh, and then it uh, does something. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like you know, in, in, the, in the mobile, we, we pull from the top to down and then it, it goes down and it animates back and it refreshes the pages. So that's, that's logic, pull to refresh. So uh, this is similar to uh, drag and drop in previous example. So we uh, use, uh, but here it, it's not mouse down event, just touch down, so we touch the screen, then uh, it would start listening to, and then, uh, yeah, if we didn't have this animated back, so basically it would start listening to touch events until uh, we touch up, we, uh, we release uh, our fingers. So, uh, but for example, when we do that, uh, we can animate from top to bottom, but when we release the finger, it needs to animate back. So uh, here we need, you know, like when uh, one observable is, has finished, we need another observable to start, uh, to be subscribed basically. So for that, uh, we can use concat operator. So here uh, you can see after exhaust map, after we start, we concat uh, two observable, one is, uh, touch move. Uh, uh, basically, we uh, listen to the uh, touch movements until we uh, the touch up 
event is triggered and we release the finger from the screen. And then, uh, yeah, then the animate back kicks in and uh, uh, basically uh, it animates back to starting position. I know it's very, uh, mm, very uh, difficult example, but that's a, like, um, that's an example from a real project. And uh, uh, this is simplified version. So, uh, and then we can just uh, subscribe to pull to re refresh, and then it would listen to the events and it would work perfectly. However, there is one problem here, is that uh, for the animate back observable, we can see uh, here in the top, uh, we have get animate back uh, timer. It's a function and we have to, uh, we have to uh, provide um, position Y. It's a point uh, like how further did we pull? And uh, for that, uh, well, basically, even though we update the uh, position Y here in the tab, uh, operators, it doesn't get updated because when we initiate the uh, the animate back is initiated with zero. So basically, this means that animate back needs to be uh, the observable needs to be created dynamically on the fly, depending on uh, how much did the person uh, put down. To do that, uh, we use defer. In the line two of the code, you can see. We wrapped uh, get animate back timer in a defer, which means that it would not get initiated until uh, it is being subscribed. And by the time we call animate back, we know the value of position Y would be uh, something, and then it would initiate accordingly. Uh, another operators would be a combination of remember i mentioned that uh with a take while uh there will be a more uh, sensible uh operator so here is um the same example uh pull to refresh refresh so we have our animate back but um for example we want for example a person when he's uh dragging down when he drags down to like half of the screen to start uh, basically to start refreshing the screen or the data on the screen. So here we, uh, I, I simplified an example. So we have touchdown and exhaust map with concat uh, movements and on your back. And then uh, here basically uh, we uh, have two uh, new operators tap here we say when uh, we reach uh, like half of the screen, we need to refresh emit, which refresh uh, the, the function uh, would refresh uh, data. Then uh, we want to stop uh, uh, animation because the data would start loading, the new, new data would start loading and we want to uh, uh, stop that uh, pull down. So here we have take while, so we take um, this uh, drag and move event until we reach half of the screen. And the problem here is that uh, it works perfectly, but if we don't have the repeat, it would just only work once. So basically we uh, touch down, we moved it until half of the screen, the animation would animate back, the data will be reloaded, it would be unsubscribed, but then, uh, yeah, because we unsubscribed using take while, uh, the second time we wanna uh, drag and move, it will not work because we unsubscribe. So here we have a repeat operator that would uh, subscribe again, so that uh, our drag and drop would uh, drag uh, and move, would work uh, multiple times. So that's uh, in short. Um, thank you very much. Those were uh, the most uh, interesting, I think, operators uh, that uh, I wanted to share today. 
I'll be glad to hear your opinion, your question, and we can maybe talk about more operators. Thank you.